Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 30th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA today published an update to an earlier diary analyzing UTF-7 encoded shellcode. The DA is uh, zooming in on a problem he had with this earlier script that he talked about in that it didn't quite correctly decode UTF-7. This script did not, for example, decode the protocol part of URLs quite correctly, while not a huge problem if you uh, then, for example, take the output of the script and uh, throw it into some analysis pipe where you download additional malware based on these URLs. And of course, it's kind of uh, inconvenient if you first have to clean them up. Well, uh, Didier found a workaround. Turns out that the Windows multibyte white to char function works a little bit different than what his UTF decoder in Python did. So instead, uh, Didier now utilized the Win32 API function, essentially the same function that's uh, being used here by the malware, and that solved the problem problem. But of course, you have to be a little bit uh, careful with this. First of all, it only runs on Windows and uh, then not quite with uh, this particular API function, but calling Win32 API functions directly and feeding sort of malicious code to it. Well, uh, be careful that you don't end up with code execution as a side effect. One story that has been popping up, I've covered it a little bit over the last uh, couple of weeks, and I think I haven't covered uh, very well, is the Twilio breach early August that affected companies relying on Twilio to send one-time passwords for two-factor authentication. I did a little bit talk about the Octopus uh, campaign, and that's really sort of what this is all about. Twilio originally discovered a breach on August 4th, and if you're not familiar with Twilio, it's a really commonly used, and I use it too, a company that uh, provides a simple API to send uh, voice messages or send SMS messages. So it's quite popular in particular for second factor authentication. And that's exactly sort of what happened here. Okta, which is an authentication service uh, provider, learned that its Twilio account was affected by the breach. The threat actor then used the access to Twilio to not only uh, interfere with the two-factor authentication tokens, but also learn the phone numbers of Okta users. And then they later, and that was sort of the Octopus uh, campaign I talked about. They later then used those phone numbers to send targeted phishing attempts. They even called some of those phone numbers, which then turned out to be Okta employees and also some of their family members. This did not just affect Okta. Okta has a great blog about this. Uh, Authy, another company that sort of offers authentication services, it's actually a subsidiary of Twilio. They were affected as well uh, by similar attacks. And I think I mentioned when I talked about the Octopus uh, case that about 130 different companies in total are affected from this. So it's something good to keep in mind. And yes, of course, uh, SMS as two-factor authentication has gotten a lot of uh, critics. I always consider it better than no second factor and something for like not anything that's not necessarily a financial side or such. It's often sufficient. Of course, if you do want something better, then go for a second factor that can't easily be copied like a hardware token. An adware is a malware category that is not always easy uh, to define. A lot of free software, of course, openly uses advertisement to monetize their software. Where it usually becomes malicious is 
if uh, the software that is placed the ad sort of doesn't really own up to it it sort of interferes with other software in particular on android if it shows a full page ads not just ads within the software itself malwarebytes ran into a very popular pdf reader that they are now uh, c- categorizing as adware it is distributed via the google play store this pdf reader had over 1 million downloads so pretty uh, popular and that's exactly what you would expect from adware it displays these full page ads even uh, if it's not uh, directly like open running and it will also actually delay the ads for a few hours so you don't really associate the ads that you're seeing with the app that you installed a few hours ago Google also announced that starting November, it will no longer allow VPN software in its Play Store to be interfering with advertisements. This includes blocking, so replacing advertisements, I think makes a lot of sense that this is not allowed, but it also includes blocking of legitimate advertisements. And many VPNs, of course, offer this sort of as an added service. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.